Hmm, let's make another video. I was making my breakfast this morning and uh, I just remembered, uh, uh, it was a little while back, I remember watching a, a video on YouTube, I forget the guy's channel, I'll, I'll uh, link it in or talk about him later, but uh, my sister found this cool toaster um, quite a few years ago. I think she found it in the dump or at a garage sale or something. And it's the coolest and the most reliable toaster we've ever owned. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty cool. Um, there's no levers or nothing on it. You just uh, drop your toast in, and it just it's fully automatic. But uh, there are a couple things I'd like to do with it. One, uh, uh, I've I've known this for a while now, and even the, the YouTube video says it. It's only got the two polarity cord, and the cord is way too long on it anyway. I was gonna, I'm gonna put a three foot cord on it. But uh, technically, this is kind of dangerous. It's a little out of date because I'll use this as an example. All newer stuff like the microwave here has a three prong plug you know you got your hot your neutral and then it's got a safety ground in case something ever goes wrong it'll trip the circuit breaker whereas this old girl the toaster's only got a two prong plug and it's not and it's not polarized either so if there was ever a wire shorted out on here this whole thing is metal and if, a, and if a hot wire ever got old, you know, because and it is old, it could short out or get something metal. And if you touched it, it's going to hurt. <laughs> so my project today, I'm going to cl clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to put a newer style three-prong plug on this. That's my plan. <sighs> first things first, got to get all the breadcrumbs out of it. Yeah, uh, here here you can kind of see what I'm talking about already. Uh, this These are the two wires that come in. They're white. And you see how they're... <laughs> you know, it's a wire touching... So if, if there was any little slight... Uh, if any of these wires get exposed, you know, because pl plastic, you know, this older cloth type, you know, it can get old and brittle after a while touches any of this metal <laughs> it wouldn't be a good thing but anyway, anyway first thing I do is clean some of the crumbs out of it here in the sink before I take it down and work on it well that definitely needed a good cleaning jeez gotta keep that old girl going so I can keep cooking my waffles for breakfast I love my waffles <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I could go to the store and I could buy a cord, but I got tons and tons of cords. Um, lots of uh, computer power supply cords. The only thing I'm a little leery of, though, about computer power supply cords is uh, most of the ones I got are. Uh, can we read that? Are only. Uh, 18 gauge and I'm thinking that's a little on the light side for a toaster that's drawn over a thousand watts I'd like to be at least 16 gauge um, This <laughs> I was tempted to cut the cord off this, but I want to wreck one of my good surge bars This is 14 if I could 14 would be awesome But I did find this cord. I don't know what it came off of But uh, I'm thinking this might be the cord I cut and use this is uh Let's see, can I read the writing on there? There we go. Yeah, 16 gauge. This is, this is pretty heavy duty. I think this will be alright. I'm sure anything's better than what's on it. I'm thinking that's the that's the cord there. Yeah, these other cords are a little bit too light. Yeah, you want at least, I'd, I'd recommend at least 16 gauge to 14 gauge. Well, let's start taking it apart and see what we got to work with here. Got 
Got them four screws out. And again, following the advice of the YouTube tutorial video, uh, he said turn this knob all the way one way or the other and uh, gently pry it off. Uh, another little difference I noticed between uh, his his video and mine, he had two screws here. I see mine just got the one little quarter inch uh, bolt here that I got to take out. That should come off. Ooh, nasty. Definitely got some cleaning to do. Uh, yeah, this one's pretty much the same as uh, the one in his video, only these are all white. Um, so, yeah, I got some cleaning to do here first. Okay, so far things are going really well. Uh, just like in the video, I found uh, one of these... Uh, eye things for the ground cable and I bolted it down in between there. I got the wire cut to length to run through the loop-de-loop. -loop. And now, uh, also another thing, uh, this has got a double pull, double throw switch. So I don't know what he was talking about unless my toaster is a little different. There is no hot or neutral. It, they can be either one. That's why I assume why the original design didn't have polarity on the plug. So I guess it don't matter which wire goes to what. Uh, originally I was just gonna solder and heat shrink these. Those are usually the best connection. Them silly butt connectors he used. I cannot stand them butt connectors. If, uh, if you watch the link to the video I'm gonna refer to you notice he really struggles to get the wires back in this loops and as he's doing it them stupid butt connectors keep letting go so I have a couple decisions I could do the tried and true my way solder solder and heat shrink or originally the original cord had uh, these kind of connectors and I do have those those kind I could go with the original um, but those, these ain't much better than them stupid buck connectors. If you can get them to crimp down really tight, it's usually not a problem. And I do have the proper uh, crimper for that, wherever I put it. Oh, there they are. You know, if you got the proper crimp, crimper to do it, they're not too bad. Or the third option, I'm really tempted. Uh, I've never used these. I've never heard of them even. A friend of mine sent me some of these. Supposedly um, you just put both ends of your wires in there and you just heat shrink it. I'm a little leery of trying these out. It'd be my first time but I really would like to see how these work. I'm half tempted to try these so uh, we'll see. I guess if that don't work I'll go back to my tried and true way. But uh, these wires are already short short as it is so you only get maybe one or two chances to get this right after that this, these wires are going to get too short to do anything so I don't know we'll see I'm gonna I think I might try these we'll see what happens but uh, yeah everything's going well so far well unfortunately I went with the tried and true method um, I think if I would have had the right size of these it could have worked. These are just a little bit too small. I, I tried my damnedest to push them on there but it wouldn't. And this size I already tried one and I, it just it would not. It was just a little bit too big. So I think if I had a size in between it would have worked okay but I, I like the good old solder method. I know this is not going to come unhooked. You you make a good solder joint it's, it's, it's good and then you just put a little sleeve over it. I, I've done this for 20 years. I just I don't like butt connectors. I don't like crimping. The good old solder joint is the best. I've never had that come apart so went with the old tried and true reliable way. Now the fun part getting all this stuffed into this. So that ought to be interesting. Yeah that's still the best looking connection you can make with a wire. Heat shrink and solder. So yeah now that that's all. Now the really really fun part begins. Like I said again, even the guy on YouTube he really struggled to get that loop-de-loop -loop in there and then to get
get this back on there. Oh yeah, by the way, just like you said, make sure you got the cord in this hole before you do it. Or you got to start all over again. <laughs> so, yeah, now for the fun part. Okay, so far not too bad. I don't want to take my fingers off it, but uh, yeah, it's almost impossible to record to show me doing this, but yeah, you want to get it in the loop-de-loop -loop and everything tucked in nice and uh, as you try to get this plate on at the same time. Should be interesting. Okay, after cuss word, after cuss word and struggle, 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 I think I might have found an easier way to help this uh, step. I got the hot glue gun out and uh, I decided to put a little dab of hot glue to hold them stupid where they need to be in place. Hopefully that'll help me. And even after hot glue uh, hardens, it's still somewhat soft and malleable. Plus it's not so hot that it melts through the sheathing of the wire. So it's just, just something there to hold the stinking wires in until I get this plate back on in there. So hopefully they'll a little dab of super glue on each intersection there. It'll hopefully it'll help me get this stupid thing back on here. <laughs> you think they could have found a better way to do that, but anyway, I think that'll that'll help help a lot. Whew, success. Yeah, that's that's quite a challenge getting that all back in there. But uh, yeah, using that hot glue that that really helped. At least they kept the wires in place until get this back on and screwed down and I had to play with the ground wire a little bit to make sure it wasn't pinching off anywhere and put my screws in all I could do is put a couple more screws in put the bottom plate back on should be good to go and I might adjust the this a little bit every once in a while it, it, you have to you, you know it doesn't always go down right away so I might adjust that thing a little bit maybe it'll work a little better other than that I think it, uh, we're gonna be good to go here okay I got all the screws back in everything back together um, this center screw I turned it counterclockwise one whole turn and by doing that it uh, gave this a little more spring a little more tension because yeah when after you made about four, five, six slices of bread, it 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 have a hard time going down once in a while. You really had to drop the bread in really hard and like kind of bang on it, flick it a few times. And it, this did seem kind of loose. Now that I loosen that screw one turn, this has got a little more. Like in the video, it says it's a little uh, it's got a little more spring to it. So I guess it's time to take it upstairs and make a piece of toast. See if it still works. There, yeah, that's much better. I put a about a three foot cord on it. That's nice and short. I got all that cord dangling here. Not really hungry right now, but I guess we have to test it. I'll have to have a piece of toast. See if this is going to work. Ooh, look at that. I hard, hardly had to drop it. That's working much better. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, it's about the right. I think we're getting close. I might have to adjust it here a little bit. Click. Rise. I don't care what anybody says, that's still the coolest toaster I've ever seen. Yeah. Best toaster we ever had. Should be good for another 50 years with put a new cord on it. Mm -hmm. Alright, well that was fun. Oh yeah, like, like my mother mentioned, this toaster um, outlasted four brand new toasters and what all of them lived up here 10 12 years this toaster has outlasted four brand new toasters it just keeps going and going and going so yeah <laughs> I should have shined it up a little bit I might have to find some polish and give it one good final hmm, pretty good piece of toast
Yeah, that's all fixed. I feel a little better using it now. Yeah, I was always a little leery or scared that one day either Ma would touch it or I'd touch it and we get get a nice little tickle. Now I ain't too worried about it now that it's properly grounded and wired correctly. So yeah. Okay, I want to give a real big thank you and I hope you go to check out his channel. It's called Technology Connections. And if, uh, yeah, definitely check his channel out. He's got two videos. Uh, one, he talks about he talks about the toaster, antique toaster that's better than yours, and he's right, it is. It's a really good toaster. He talks about it. And why do I not have sound? Hold on here. Okay, take two. I had my headphones plugged into the computer yet. That shuts the speakers off. By the time this video is over, you're going to be mad at your toaster. <laughs> this is a Sunbeam Radiant Control Toaster. It's pretty old. One might say, quite old. This particular toaster was most likely made in the early 1960s, but its design goes back at least to 1948. But don't let its age fool you. Anyway, uh, yeah, he, he does a much, much, much better video than I could have ever done. Uh, he's got two videos. One where he talks about it when it was made. I didn't know, I had no idea it was that old. He, he figured it was made in the 60s. And then uh, another really, really helpful video is uh, he does a video on uh, fixing it. I was... Some toasters. Hello and welcome to the Technology Connections 2 follow-up where we take a look at these three toasters, examine... The difference is that these wires are actually labeled, or actually colored. They were both white in the other one, so they have blue and red. My wire stripper and crimp tool has a very dull cutting blade. And this little excess room here that I'm worried about. And I did read that I did double crimp it on the other one. But yeah, his his video was uh, very very helpful. So if you happen to have a toaster like I got. Um, yeah, big big thank you to to that channel. So uh, I'll uh, I'll put a couple links in uh, my description below my video, so you can go check out his channel and these videos. So yeah, big big uh, big thank you to this this channel for posting them two videos. It was a big help, and it was really fun restoring that old toaster. So thanks thanks for watching. Bye.